Hello, I'm Dr. Craig Clifford, and this is Step by Step, where we take practitioners through important veterinary conditions and issues on a step-by-step -step manner. Today, we'll be talking about canine lymphoma and what to do once the pet owner has decided to choose chemotherapy or when the pet owner has decided against chemotherapy. These algorithms will walk you through situations where using chemotherapy versus not using chemotherapy would be appropriate. This step-by-step -step is sponsored by DECRA. Liberdia CA1 is a conditionally approved drug for the use and treatment of dogs with lymphoma. Now, a couple of things before we get started. The first is in regards to CA1. What does that mean? Well, that is conditional approval. And conditional approval means that the FDA feels Liberdia CA1 is safe when used appropriately, and it has a reasonable expectation of efficacy. Currently, the pivotal trial is underway in order to obtain full approval through the FDA. The second is in regards to the algorithms. As you can imagine, there are many different scenarios where a pet owner comes to you with a diagnosis of lymphoma. The advisory board for Laverdia CA1 had put together the two most common scenarios, and that's what we'll be focusing on. So let's get to it. On to the algorithms. All right, so let's look at the first scenario. The client chooses chemotherapy. So of course, when a diagnosis of lymphoma is made and you've had that discussion with the owner, they're certainly gonna be encouraged to seek the care or at least oncology consultation. If they are then waiting for referral, we'll talk about what to do. The concern certainly for lymphoma is we know that if a dog is left untreated, the average survival may be only six to eight weeks. As all of us know, primary care practices are backed up for weeks as our oncologist. So let's look at that scenario. If the patient is stable, if we can't get the patient in right away, we can consider starting Laverdia CA1 in consultation with the oncologist. So for me as an oncologist, where I view a real positive of this drug is that it sets up a conversation piece and opens up conversation between the primary care and the specialist. Because certainly being a specialist, you know, the last thing I want is a ton of cases that are coming in back door through emergency. So I think this allows the primary care to talk with the oncologist. I'm not pushing you to try to get this in, but I have a lymphoma. They're very stable, but they're not in your schedule for four to five weeks. Would you be okay if I ended up starting them on Laverdia CA? Because we know the drug appears to have efficacy and the hope would be is that we can start treatment immediately and hopefully slow down the progression and allow the pet to then be able to move on to potential treatment at the hospital. Let's look at the second scenario. The pet is ill. And if the disease is progressing rapidly, well, that's when certainly, again, the conversation piece of speaking with the oncologist or the internist to consider how can I try to get them in quicker to see you or do we need to have them come through an emergency basis? You know, what can we do to get this patient started in a quicker manner? Or do they still see that Laverdia CA may play a role in such a case? Or do we need to bite the bullet and potentially start a steroid if the patient is very ill? If they are started on steroids beforehand and then they see the oncologist several weeks later, the steroids themselves can set up multi-drug resistance and instead of a very high response rate, it may drop by nearly 50%. This class of drugs does not appear to affect multi-drug resistance, so that's not an issue there. So again, it could be used as a bridge. And the goal of this, of course, is again, client chooses chemotherapy, and we look at the two scenarios, pet is stable and pet is ill, with the ultimate goal of getting them started on therapy a traditional CHOP-based standard of care at the specialty hospital. So let's look at the other part of the algorithm where our client decides against chemotherapy, but they still have a, a desire to try to treat or help their pet. 
When we break that down, we look at they still have a desire to treat the patient or they simply want palliation alone. So if I have an owner that declines the standard of care, so they do not want to go through chemotherapy, whether it's CHOP based or modified treatment, we can then move forward with prescribing Lavertia CA. As we know, the vast majority of lymphomas are not treated. My hope is that this is going to expand access and be an unmet need. I had previously had the pleasure of speaking, doing lectures with one of my primary care doctors. Her name is Kim Gallagher. And one of the things Kim had said really struck with me in that, you know, as a, a primary care clinician, she saw a lot of lymphomas, but many of the owners did not want to move forward for a variety of reasons with treatment. And she was tired of only being able to offer them palliative care in the form of steroids. You know, she doesn't want to do chemotherapy. She's not set up for that in her clinic, but to be able to offer something other than steroids, I think is huge. And again, that's going to expand our access and that provides an unmet need by having Libertia CA in a scenario like that. Now, we also may have an owner that elects palliation alone. So whether it's due to not wanting referral, financial reasons, distance, their own preconceived notions, I think we can then talk to them about end of life and offer palliative supportive care. So whether that involves the use of steroids, whether that involves pain medications, et cetera. As to why pet owners may choose one option or the other, I think there's a number of different possibilities. You as the primary care, you know, you have a long-standing relationship as lymphoma generally occurs in older dogs. So understanding why they may have chosen one path or the other, and then being supportive of it, I think is very important. We don't want an owner leaving feeling that they're a terrible person because they can't move forward in a certain direction. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, DECRA, for sponsoring this edition of Step by Step. More resources on canine lymphoma can be found on vetfolio.com. Federal law restricts this drug to use on or the order of a licensed veterinarian, use only as directed. It's a violation of federal law to use this product other than as directed in the label. Important safety information. For use in dogs only, Lavertia CA is conditionally approved for the treatment of lymphoma in dogs. Not for use in humans. Keep this and all medications out of the reach of children. Children should not come in contact with Lavertia CA. Pregnant women, women who may be pregnant, nursing women, and children should not handle or administer Lavertia CA or come in contact with the feces, urine, saliva, or vomit of treated dogs for three days following treatment. Lavertia CA can affect male fertility based upon animal studies and studies in humans. Wear protective, disposable, chemotherapy-resistant gloves when handling Lavertia CA to avoid direct exposure to moistened, broken, or crushed tablets or biologic waste from the treated dog, which includes feces, urine, saliva, or vomit. Do not use in dogs that are pregnant, lactating, or intended for breeding. Lavertia CA is a possible teratogen and can affect female and male fertility. Dogs should be frequently monitored for hematologic or serum chemistry abnormalities. The most common reported adverse reactions in dogs include anorexia, weight loss, vomiting, diarrhea, lethargy, polyuria, polydipsia, elevated liver enzymes, and thrombocytopenia. Please see package insert or visit decra-us.com for full prescribing information.